Welcome to my video lecture 5 for module 4. In this lecture I'll be doing a whole bunch of examples on calculating uh, the standard and non-standard normal distributions and their probabilities and their values uh, and I'll be showing you the different cases that you could be working with. As always I'll start with a uh, overview of the calculations involved for normal distributions and I'll go into the specific examples after that. So to talk about a review one more time, uh, we're going to be dealing with two types of normal distribution, standard and non-standard normal distribution. I'll start with a standard normal distribution which is labeled as N01. This is just the mathematical name given to a normal distribution that's standard. And what does that mean? That means it's in terms of Z's and the mean is zero and standard deviation is one. So the way they write it in the business, it says that's a Z. That means the Z, which is your random variable, has a normal distribution with a mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. So if I were to draw the normal distribution graph here, it would look it would look something like that. And the X axis here will be the Z axis and the Y axis will be the probability axis. And if it's a standard normal distribution, it means the center is always zero, which means the mean is always zero. Here, for a standard normal distribution, we're going to be working with two directional calculations. One is, I'm gonna give you a Z score and I'm gonna ask you to find a probability for it or the percentage. Or I'm going to give you the probability and ask you to calculate the z-score. Both of these calculations are under the standard normal distribution. So I'm going to give you an example for each one fundamentally so you could see how it works out. Now let's go with the forward calculations and I call this the backwards calculations or inverse calculations they also call it and they call it the distribution calculation so when you have the dist command you're going from z to p when you have the inverse command here you're going from p to z don't forget that so every time i'm giving you the z value and i'm asking you to calculate the probability your command must have distribution in it dist in it norm dot dist norm dot s of course because it's standard dot dist but if I'm asking you to find Z and I've given you the probability, then you have to use the inverse command, norm dot inverse or norm dot S inverse. So those are the two commands for standard normal distribution. Now, how are these uh, examples gonna play out? So let's start with a uh, value, say 1.68. So I'm gonna draw a standard normal distribution there's my Z axis, there's my probability axis. And now I wanna find the probability that Z is less than 1.68. Now, which one of these, which one of the problems am I working with in terms of classification? This is a standard normal distribution problem, which is in terms of Z's. Uh, the mean is zero, the standard deviation is one. And since I've given you a z-score, so you see here, I've told you that z starts at 1.68. It's not equal to, but it starts at 1.68. So they've given you the z-value. And they say find the probability of that. So that means probability is not given. Well, that means I've given you the z-score. I'm asking you to find a probability. So you know whatever command you write must have the dist in it, because it's a forward calculation of giving you Z and I'm asking you to find the probability. Now, how does that translate to a picture? Well, if Z is one point is less than 1.68, and I know that the center is zero, well, the 1.68, and since standard deviation is one, this is one, this is two, this is three, so 1.68 will be somewhere there. You don't have to be exact. And if you connect it to the curve, because that's how you always do it, and that's 1.68 and i'm asking you to find the probability that z is less than 1.68 so basically i'm asking you to find the area the amount of area under the normal curve that's to the left of 1.68 let me shade that for you 
Fantastic. So basically, I'm asking you to find the yellow probability given that I've given you 1.68 as a z-score. Now, the commands in Excel that we were using to calculate these generically, by default, when you see the word cumulative at the very end, it means it's always calculating the area to the left. So the basic default command within Excel that would be used to calculate any kind of a probability, always, once you type the z-score, let's say 1.68, Excel will always give you the area below it. And we'll show you what if you want the area above it, well, you have to do one minus because you know the whole thing is one. So let's not get ahead of us and let's just focus on this example. Now, the command for this example uh, on Excel will be to say, okay, I'm trying to find a probability that I'm less than 1.68. Okay, well, and that's a z-score. So I have to go to my Excel sheet. I have to type equal to norm because it's a normal distribution, dot s because it's a standard normal distribution. And I have to use the dist command. Why? Because if you remember, if I'm giving you the z-score and I'm asking you to find a probability, you have to use the distribution command, not the inverse command. All right, so you open the parentheses. And you notice it says you have to put in a Z value. Your Z is 1.68 and then comma. And then you have to say true or false. True means cumulative. False is a density probability density function. We'll never use false in this class whatsoever. We'll always use the cumulative, which is true. And that will give you that yellow area up there. And if you type that on Excel and press uh, enter, you'll get the area that's less than 1.68 which excel will spit out 0.95352142 and uh, for this module we'll always go with four decimal places as the final answer for probability 0.9535 will be my final answer so the probability that z is less than 1.68 is 0.9535 which is about 95 percent very good now what if i'd ask you to find a probability that z is greater than 1.68 so i'd have said find a probability now that z is greater than 1.68 well the default command in excel will give you the probability that's less than 1.68 so if you want to find a probability that you're above it if you already have the probability that you below it is 0.9535, then the probability that you above it would basically be 1 minus the probability that it's below it, which is 0.9535, rounded to four decimal places. And if you didn't have the probability that Z is less than 1.68, and this was the first time you would see this exercise, then what you would type on Excel would be, this exact command up here but one minus that so you'll write one equals one minus the norm dot s dot dist of 1.68 comma true so if i ask you to find the probability of less then it's just the command if i find if i ask you to find a probability that is greater than then it's one minus the command. So don't forget that little fact. So if I'm asking to find a probability that you less than some Z value up here, then you always use the norm.sdist command. But if I say find a probability that Z is greater than 1.68, so I want the top area, then you do one minus the bottom area, obviously. So here are the uh, calculation for the forward well, the forward calculation for the standard normal distribution, which is the, I've given you Z and I'm asking you, let me use a red color here. I've given you Z and I'm asking you to find a probability and we call that the forward standard command. And I'll give you the two examples for that. There's one more example for that I could give. So I've told you what happens if I ask you to find a probability that you below a value. What happens if you are asked to find a probability that you are uh, above some value and ultimately you'll get the question that what's the probability that you between two values and that would be the third type of an example I could ask you from a standard normal distribution so the question is 
Now here's the third example and then I'll move on to the inverse standard. So the third question is, I'm not asking you to find a probability that you're below or above, I'm asking you to find a probability that you are in between two values, say minus 1.32, the z value 1.78. So if I were to draw this, again, it's always a very good idea in this chapter to draw what you're trying to do. It gives you a feeling for what the shading area you're calculating looks like. So if this is a, again, standard normal distribution, why? Because I'm in terms of Z's, which means my horizontal axis will be a Z value. My uh, vertical axis will be the probability. Don't forget the center is zero. So minus 1.32 will be obviously somewhere on the left side of zero. Positive 1.78 will be somewhere on the right side of zero. And the question is, how do you find the probability of in between? So basically, I'm trying to find that area in between those two lines in the middle of the normal distribution. All right, so I'm asking you to find the yellow area between those two probabilities. Well, if I was asking you to find a probability of completely being below 1.73, I mean, 7, 8, sorry, then you will just would have done the norm dot as this of 1.78. And if I would have said find a probability that you're below negative 1.32, again, you'd have done norm dot as this of negative 1.32. So, so norm dot s dot this of 1.78 comma true will give you the area completely below 1.78. And if I type norm.s.dist dot dot of negative 1.32 comma true, that would give me the probability that you are below negative 1.32. Now, if I want the in-between probabilities, then you'll do uh, norm.s.dist dot dot of 1.78 comma true minus norm dot s dot this of negative 1.32 comma true. So if I'm asking you to find the probability of in between two z values, you do the top, the norm dot s, the norm dot s this of the top number minus the norm dot s this of the bottom number. And, and there's nothing else it could be except these three cases for the forward case, main case of the standard normal distribution. So one more time, if you have a standard normal distribution, which means your normal distribution is in terms of Z's and the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, then there are two scenarios. Either I give you Z and ask you for the P or I give you P, I ask you for the Z. This, the first exam set of examples is for the first case, the forward case, which is I've given you Z scores and I'm asking you to find a probability and there are three different ways that could go. One of them is I ask you to find a probability that you're below some Z value, and that's the first example I gave you. The second one is if I ask you to find a probability that you're above a Z value, which is the second example I've given you. And the third one was the probability that you are in between two Z values, and that would be the third example I've given you where you subtract the soup the two Z values from each other and you get the in-between area. And if you do that, by the way, your answer should be, and this is on the PowerPoint, if you round the answer to four decimal places, your answer should be 0 0.8690. Now we start with the backwards examples for the standard normal distribution. So now I'm going to be giving you, and I'm gonna make this in red. So now I'm gonna be giving you this, or giving you examples for the second problem. Again, we're dealing with the N01, standard normal distribution. But now, instead of giving you the Z values, I'm gonna give you probabilities, and I might ask you to find the Z value. So I'm doing the inverse problem. Or in other words, in Excel, I'm gonna be using the inverse command. All right, so let's start with those examples. 